Here we're going to learn about some problems of the nervous system that you either may have sadly been familiar yourself or know someone that may have had one of these. And this kind of occurs when the nervous system doesn't work 100% right. So starting with the first one, very common for people playing sports, are concussions. It's a temporary disturbance of the brain's ability to function due to a hard blow to the head. So what's happening here is, in this case, we have the head reaching a um, hard object here. And this traumatic brain injury changes the way the brain functions. So this soft tissue that the brain is made of, causing the brain to jolt forward, ultimately causes a shift in the brain and can cause injury to occur. Now, this injury could be very minimal um, bruising or s very minimal swelling, tearing of blood vessels. But if it's pretty intense, this can lead to um, greater and greater concern. So most concussions are mild and can be treated with appropriate care. But if it's a severe concussion, this is why there's concussions protocols in a lot of sporting events now, if it's a severe concussion, it can cause longer-term effects if left untreated. Some of the games that are associated with concussions in particular is football as being number one. Uh, this shows football leads the way in high school concussions. Other sports pose risk as well. Below are the rates of concussions per athlete per 100,000 games and practices nationally. So football is the highest, boys hockey, boys ice hockey is the next highest, followed by boys lacrosse, followed by girls lacrosse, girls soccer, boys wrestling, and girls field hockey. Uh, the reason why football is typically such high, it's a very contact-oriented sport, um, and there's a lot of that abrupt stopping here through so tackling uh, that occurs. As a result, they've tried to design helmets and put protocols in place to reduce the occurrence and the impact of concussions have on players. Paralysis is another form. It's a loss of sensation and movement of part of the body due to an injury of the spinal cord or brain. Keeping in mind the higher the damage occurs on the spinal cord, the greater amount of impact it will have on the body. If it's lower in the uh, spinal cord here, lower parts of the body will be affected. The higher it occurs in the spinal cord, you can think about it from that point on south is where the um, paralysis could occur. This is why, especially for car accidents, you want to maintain especially this upper portion as intact as possible because uh, the higher up that damage occurs, the more of that body that will be affected. Parkinson's disease is when the brain doesn't produce enough of the neurotransmitter uh, that transmits messages from the brain to muscles. So symptoms are tremors, rigid muscles, um, shuffle walking, and loss of facial expression. You see here a healthy brain. In a Parkinson's cell infected brain, we see the reduction in the amount of neurotransmitters being produced. Keep in mind, a normal neuron would produce this many, a lot for normal movement. Here's a person affected with Parkinson's disease, and we see our dopamine produces much reduced. Even though the number of receptors are the same, simply having a reduced amount of dopamine reduces the amount of receiving of that signal, causing a poor movement of the, that person's muscles. Continuing on, we have Alzheimer's disease. This is a gradual shrinking of the neurons in the um, cerebrum. This can cause memory loss, emotional disturbances, and inability to function on its own, and ultimately, sadly, death. By the body simply just not being able to make those necessary connections to produce vital bodily functions. Epilepsy is another one. This is an abrupt transmission of a message between the neurons and the brain. Sorry, an abnormal transmission of messages between the neurons and the brain. This can be ab abrupt in the sense that a seizure could occur in part or the entire part of the brain. Here we see a partial seizure. This is normal e EEG levels, normal brain activity. The partial seizure is that increased amount. Uh, a generalized seizure or grand mal is where the whole brain kind of goes through this and we see massive um, elevated signal levels throughout the entire brain. This would be called epilepsy. Lastly, that was, at least that we're going to discuss here, are multiple sclerosis or Tay-Sachs disease. These both result from a degeneration of the myelin sheath located in neurons. Now these myelin sheaths offer a protection. Notice that as this electricity transfers here, not having protected, the signal kind of dies out. Here the signal is being able to jump and move a lot quicker. This breakdown of the myelin sheath is what's reducing the signal and reducing that signal is causing all sorts of potential symptoms. It can be everything from cognitive impairment uh, to simple pain to not having our organs function properly. 
Uh, all this is because of a loss of the neuron's ability to transfer signals.